Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Eagle Talks Football, and we are back again with another video. This is going to be the Premier League prediction video, ladies and gentlemen, where I am going to give you guys my Premier League table. I'm going to go from 20th all the way to first and tell you guys what I think about the teams. Also, before we get into the Premier League predictions, I will also be speaking about the player of the season, the young player of the season, and also what I think, who's going to win the Golden Boot, who's going to win the Golden Glove, so on and so forth. But before we go any further, please do hit that like button. Please do hit that subscribe button on the video if you enjoy this type of content. Now, let's get this show started, ladies and gentlemen. First, we are going to start with the relegation battle. And I'm going to use shout out to James uh, or uh, if you guys don't know who he is, that runs a wonderful YouTube channel. He has this application that we will be using to help us with the league predictions. So first, uh, relegation candidates, I'm going to have Southampton in the relegation candidates, Ipswich, Leicester. I'm going to have uh, Nottingham Forest in there. I'm actually going to have Wolves and Everton just on the cost. So these are the teams that I uh, these are the teams that I'm categorizing as the potential relegation candidates. And I think this relegation battle is going to be one where we see one of the teams that that got promoted to stay up, where the other two will most likely go down. I think if Leicester get the points deduction, they will 100% go down and they'll be in 20th position. They do have a quality team, but I just think that the points deduction will be too much for them. As for Southampton. And Ipswich, the other candidates uh, outside of those two to go down are Wolves and Nottingham Forest. And I just think Nottingham Forest have too much uh, money and and transfer clout to to not go out, not get themselves out of this situation. They have too much quality across the their team, and they just constantly improve. Where Wolves, that's the team that I could see go down for the first time in years. Um, if one of the teams out of Southampton and Ipswich could stay up or Leicester. I do think I'm literally it's a flip of a coin between uh, between between Wolves and potentially dare I say it Ipswich? No, no, Ipswich can't stay up. It's gonna. It's. It, I think Wolves. I, th I think Wolves is gonna stay up. Wolves are just going to stay up. I think Southampton and Leicester are nailed on for me for 20th and 19th. It's between Ipswich and Wolves. And I think this is the year where all three teams, once again, just like last year, the the the, the promoted side all get relegated. Where Wolves, Nottingham Forest, Everton are in that category just above them. Above them, I'm also going to have uh, Bournemouth. Actually, I should have Bournemouth lower I should have Bournemouth a little bit lower. I should have Bournemouth uh, as low as uh, 15th. Everton is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, Brentford is going to be a little bit lower this season, especially if they lose Ivan Toney. Um, I think Brighton is going to be below Fulham. I think Crystal Palace will be below Fulham. And, and then I think uh, Fulham is going to be that team in 10th place that's really doing good in the league, where West Ham... Are going to surprise people this year. I think West Ham are going to surprise people. If we just look at that category, that category higher, I actually have Aston Villa making a massive drop this season. Aston Villa had a wonderful season last year. They're now in the Champions League. They're going to be competing against all these teams. I think they are going to fall massively this season. And you're going to see Aston Villa be one of those teams that go from being a Champions League level squad to now going all the way down to ninth place in the league where you're going to look at Newcastle. I think Newcastle are also a team that is going to bounce back this season and they're going to be in that mix. West Ham is going to be a team that's going to be in that mix. Chelsea's going to have to run a bounce back. Tottenham are going to try to get top four also. So that is going to be interesting. So at this moment in time, I've kind of done majority of the teams from 10 down. I just need to do ten uh, from from ten uh, from nine up, and I think Aston Villa is going to be that team that I have in ninth place. Who's going to be the team that I have in eighth? Who is going to be the team that I have in eighth? Well, I think Newcastle. They just don't have enough yet. They just don't have enough yet. Isaac is going to be firing. Out uh, Bruno Gamares is still there. All these guys over there are still good, but I just think Manchester United, Chelsea, Tottenham. You know what? Manchester United, Chelsea, Tottenham, West Ham, Newcastle. It's honestly it's a flip of a coin for those uh, for those teams. But if I was to put these teams in order of who I think has 
the best potential odds to finish higher this season in the league because I do think Man City and Arsenal, we'll talk about them in a second, I do think Liverpool are stapled as third. But when it comes to the rest of well, when it comes to the rest of it, it's going to be a situation. It comes to a situation where you got Newcastle. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. You got Newcastle who are just outside of that when it comes to quality. West Ham, though, West Ham have massively improved, and I think they're going to be the team that 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 makes that jump, makes that leap, and overtakes some of these other guys. I think Chelsea will then be finishing in seventh. Yes, Chelsea will finish in seventh. I think with all the signings that they're making, you would think that they would get back into the top four. But I do think Chelsea, it will take them a while. They might not click right away. They might not get into gear right away. There is a lot of players coming in, new players, new managers. And defensively, Chelsea are just so poor. They're going to have to, they're going to be in a lot of shootouts where they're going to have to score a lot of goals to stay in games. And I just think Chelsea, with European football also, I just think they're just going to be that much better. Where West Ham is my surprise package of the season. I think West Ham are going to finish sixth. I think West Ham are going to finish in the Europa League spots. And they're going to be that team that's just outside of the Champions League spots that, that, that has a chance to get top four, but are just not there yet. And I think West Ham, if I'm not mistaken, last year they were they, they finished in... What, what position did West Ham finish in last season? Because if I'm not mistaken, last season West Ham did not have the best of campaigns, but I can't seem to remember exactly where they finished in the league last year. Yeah, they finished, uh, West Ham finished ninth. So I don't see them finishing ninth this year with the quality that they have. I do think it's going to be a situation where we're going to see West Ham now finishing in sixth position. So Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, we're going to talk about those three in a second, but we need to talk about Tottenham and United. I think I think top four is between Tottenham and Man United, and I think I had Tottenham in there for the longest time, but I just think Man United are going to be in that top four position. And Tottenham, Ange Postecoglou could find himself in a difficult situation this season. He there's no more excuses. It's second season, they not only do they need to compete in the Europa League, they'll need to compete in the league. And I just don't know if they have the squad depth. They have a good first eleven. They have a good defense. They have a good. They have a decent attack and a decent midfield. It's just that depth is still weak, and they're going to be depending on youngsters like Archie Gray to come through. I just don't know. You could even make a case to swap Chelsea and Tottenham in their league positions based on the quality Chelsea will have. You know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. Now that I think about it, Chelsea will have much more of a complete squad than Tottenham. It's just Tottenham has a better defense. It's debatable, but yeah, I'm I'm going to make that switch. Seven to fifth, Chelsea. As you guys can see, I'm literally working this out right now live with you guys. Um, also, Manchester United will get top four. Eric Ten Hag will have a, a bounce back season where he he's he keep where he keeps his job and proves to everybody what's going on and. Liverpool will solidify third. They're not going to be nowhere near the title race, but they're better than the rest, and they'll stay in third. Arguably, you if 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 anyone's going to be t- dropping out from Man City, Arsenal, and Liverpool, and dropping off, it would be Liverpool. But I just think they're still going to be there. And as for the title race, I think Arsenal's going to win it this year. I think Arsenal are going to be Premier League champions, ladies and gentlemen. Man City are great. Man City are a great team. Man City have a great manager. And as long as Pep is there, people are going to say Pep is going to win the league. But Manchester City have won it four years in a row. The fatigue is going to start wearing in. You have you have players like Oscar Bob who you're going to have to depend on to have a big role and to make a big leap this season, which we don't know if he's going to be able to do yet. Also, they, they have guys like uh, Calvin Phillips, uh, what do you call it, Kovacic, Mateus Nunes, who might need to play a little bit more and give Man City a little bit more. And also, they're so dependent on Rodri staying fit and available. He's obviously, if he is available, he's going to be one of the top players this season once again. But I just think Arsenal finished behind Man City, two points behind them last season. Slightly a mentality issue over the last two years on where we drop points. Also, you could say it was it was a lack of quality and depth. We have improved on that. We are continuing to improve on that with the window not being closed yet. And I do think guys like William Saliba, Saka, Martin Odegaard, Declan Rice, this core that we have 
are the core of a title winning side. Defensively, we are going to be the best team, and we will we will once again keep the most clean sheets. David Raya is going to be the golden. David Raya is going to be the guy who wins the golden glove. No debate in my opinion. Out of all the top keepers, David Raya is going to be up there for golden golden glove. You're going to have Ederson up there, and you're probably going to have somebody like I don't know. Pro, uh, you're probably going to have somebody lower down the table uh, in the mix, but really and truly it's probably going to be between Ederson and Rea. And I think Arsenal is just going to keep more clean sheets than Man City. And we're going to play a much more rigid defensive side. And I think we're going to win more games. Defense wins championships. And that's where we're going to lean on to win our league title this year, in my opinion. So yeah, that is that. That is my Premier League predictions right there. Just to, just to give you guys a quick recap on where I have everybody sat right now. Of course, I told you guys I have Arsenal first, Man City second, Liverpool third, Man United fourth, Chelsea fifth, West Ham sixth, Tottenham seventh. And of course, the rest, you guys, if you guys just want to go back, recap that video. Now, let's make some more predictions on, on, on this list. So the first one is the best manager. The best manager is going to go to none other than the man himself, Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta is going to be the best manager because Arsenal is going to win the league. And Ar and if Arsenal win the league, Mikel Arteta is going to get the manager of the year. Very simple. Um, nobody else is going to take it away from him. And I think he's deserved it the last couple of years. It's just at the end, Man City just did a little bit better and it, deservedly so. It then went to other people since we didn't win the league. Now, after that, we need to talk about Golden Boot. Who's going to win the Golden Boot? I'm sorry to be boring. The golden boot is going to go once again to Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland is going to get the golden boot. He's going to be the top goal scorer of the Premier League. As long as Erling Haaland's here, he's most likely going to be the goal, top goal scorer. But surprisingly, I think the second highest goal scorer will be Isaac. Isaac will Isaac. Uh, that, I don't think that's going to even be a surprise. Isaac last year, after missing many games, still came back and scored how many goals? Like he was, he was insane. And I think Isaac is the perfect striker for Arsenal if we could. But Newcastle don't want to sell him. He only played thirty games and scored twenty-one goals. That is what was that second in the Premier League or something like that? You got to give him credit. The twenty-four-year-old Swedish striker will most likely be the second highest goal scorer in the Premier League. And if I'm going to go for a third, I'm going to go Mo Salah. Mo Salah will probably be the third highest goal scorer in the Premier League. Now, outside of that, let's go to top assisters. Top assisters in the Premier League, two of them are going to be Arsenal players. If I'm going to make a prediction on top assisters, I think it's going to go to Martin Odegaard. Martin Odegaard this season will, will be the, the top assister in the Premier League. He's going to have a wonderful season, and I think he's going to be the guy who, who kills it for Arsenal. Number two... I'm going to go, of course, none other than KDB. If KDB plays enough games, he's going to be one up there with top assisters. And then the third most assist is going to go to Bakayo Saka. Don't forget, Saka's on set pieces. Saka's also one of our most creative sparks in that team. So I do think those three guys are going to be the three most creative players in the Premier League. I've already said the Golden Glove, if, if you guys didn't already hear me earlier, I already said the Golden Glove is going to go to David Rea. So there's no point of worrying about the Golden Glove. That is going to Arsenal. We're going to keep the biggest clean sheet. We're going to keep the biggest margin of clean sheets compared to other teams. Now, let's go to the player of the season. The player of the season, this season, is going to be William Saliba. Yes, William Saliba is going to be the player of the season. We're going to win this league based on our defense. We're not going to win this league based on our goals alone. We're going to win this league because of our defense. And similar to Van Dijk in the past, similar to Liverpool, similar to Man City with, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, Ruben Diaz, we, we've seen other great centre-backs uh, win this. I think William Saliba is the best player at Arsenal. Honestly, in my opinion, when it comes to just how close he is to being the best in the world in his position, he's probably the closest to being the best in the world in his position. And I think this year it will show more than ever. If he stays fit, William Saliba will be the player of the season. William Saliba will keep Arsenal and he most likely might even play every game. He's very uh, he's very good with his injury record. So hopefully I, I don't jinx it or anything like that. But I do think William Saliba will be the player of the season and the candidates will be William Saliba. Martin Odegaard and Rodri. 
Those are the three candidates for me. Um, the young player of the season, it's very simple. The young player of the season is going to Manchester United. Manchester United have a lot of young players, and Man United, you got Kobe Mainu, you got Garnacho, and then if I'm going to go one more person to be in that mix for young player of the season after Kobe Mainu and Garnacho, hmm. After Kobe Mainu and Garnacho, who else is in that mix? Young player. Hmm. I can't think off the top of my head right now. Who would be Kobe Mainu, Garnacho? Yeah, I'm blanking. Well, uh, I I did I forgot to write down the the other the other youngster, but it's definitely going to be either Kobe Mainu or Garnacho. In my opinion, they're going to be playing a lot of minutes there, and hope uh, and if they and if Man United do get top four, as I expect, those two are going to have a big part to play. So I'm going to just go Kobe Mainu over Garnacho. I think he's going to be the young player of the year. Um, finally, if there is anything else that I had uh, on there. Who is going to be the who's going to be the Champions League winner? Well, the Champions League winner is probably going to be Real Madrid. Let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. If we're going to predict who's going to win the Champions League, nine times out of ten, if you go Real Madrid, you're not going to get it wrong. So I'm going to go Real Madrid when it. Kylian Mbappe gets his first Champions League, and that is what happens there. Um, uh, can can we pick anybody else to win the Champions League besides Real Madrid at this moment in time? They just do it every year. Like it's not even fair anymore. They just do it every single time. Um, FA Cup. FA Cup is going to be interesting because if I have Arsenal winning the league, and I have um, Real Madrid winning the Champions League, surely Man City can't go trophyless in what could potentially be Pep Guardiola's final season. So I'm gonna go Manchester City. Yeah, Man City win the FA Cup. Man City are going to win the FA Cup. Yes, I think Manchester City win the FA Cup, and that is going to be the team that does that. Um, the team that wins the League Cup, the team that wins the League Cup is going to be... I honestly couldn't care about the League Cup, but if I was to say who's going to win the League Cup, I think Arsenal go far, by the way. I think Arsenal maybe go to the semifinals of the League Cup, but we lose. And maybe the team that wins the League Cup this season. Mm, I kind of feel like it might be a Liverpool-Chelsea final once again and, and Liverpool, Liverpool win it again or something. But with Arnie Slot, you never know, so you can't really predict that. You know what? I'm actually going to go... Arsenal win the FA Cup. No, nah, I can't do that. Man City is going to win the FA Cup. The League Cup is going to go to somebody. Watch Man, Man, watch Man United win it again. That would be hilarious. Okay, I'm going Man United to win the, 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 the League Cup. I know. I didn't sound very convinced in that one, but that prediction is you could take that one with a grain of salt. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. If there's any more, there's there's the ones like the unsung heroes and the and the surprise player and all those other things. But those are just kind of for fun. I'll probably post that on a short whenever I get a chance. But hopefully, you guys enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think uh, and what you guys what you guys are what you guys are saying about everything related to the Premier League. Will Arsenal win the Premier League? Will Man City finally lose a league title to somebody? Also, will Liverpool bounce back and potentially go for a league title challenge? Do you think that will happen with the new manager, Eric Ten Hag? Is he going to uh, guide Man United back to the Champions League football? Can Chelsea get back into the top four and actually get it? Will Tottenham fall off this season and finish lower than Chelsea, Man United, and everybody else in the top six out of the big six clubs? Do you see West Ham, Aston Villa, or Newcastle breaking that top six rank let me know in the comment section what you guys think because i have west ham finishing inside the top six and for now that's my predictions hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i'll be looking back at this at the end of the season so let me know your predictions in the comments and anything you disagree with me guys i'm out of here love for the love people and you know what it is we'll catch you in the next video peace